The Patriots' new regime with its first big signing in New England. The team has agreed to re-sign tight end Hunter, Hunter Henry to a three-year, $27 million deal, with reportedly $16 million of that guaranteed. Henry, a team captain in 2023, was scheduled for unrestricted free agency after playing the past three seasons in Foxborough. He got 42 passes for 419 yards and a team-high six touchdowns last year. I mentioned it off the top of the show. Welcome into our Bella Early Edition. I am Trenny Casey. Alongside our Patriots insider, Phil Perry, and from the Boston Her- Herald, Andrew Callahan. Phil, this seems like a good move for the Patriots. Maybe a little more money than they, you know, would have had to spend if they were a good team, but, you know, a good deal nonetheless. I think it's a good deal for Hunter Henry, and it's a smart move by the Patriots to make sure they keep him around. This position is one of their many glaring needs, but to make sure that you bring back a guy who was a captain last year, uh, was a leader in that locker room for a locker room that could use as much of that as they could get, honestly, moving forward. Somebody who's going to be dependable in the pass game for whatever quarterback they bring in next. Yeah, if it's an extra couple of million dollars versus what he might have made on the open market with another team, Andrew, I'm totally okay with that. You've got more than enough money to spend, and it's worth baking in that extra value that Hunter Henry brings to your team, understanding how your team is structured right now that is totally worth it. I think it's a smart move by Elliot Wolf and Gerard Mayo. Here's how simple this is. The Patriots have one tight end under contract. His name is LeMichael Petway. You might not have known that. The other part is Hunter Henry was the best tight end in the market. And when you have no players available in-house to start or even be a backup, go get the best guy at that position. And for Hunter Henry, who's familiar, who comes back in a deal that, okay, he might have been 2 or $3 million overpaid, A, that's going to be part of the tax. And I know Phil and Trenny, you've talked about before as well for the Patriots. It's also better than overpaying for a receiver, which instead of 2 to $3 million, might actually be 5 or 6 per year. I think this is a great deal. Any concerns, any drawbacks to making this deal, Andrew? Sure. I, I mean, you look at that two to three million, maybe that's a difference between some signing some other players, but I think you got to start somewhere, right? And this is the most glaring need in terms of just raw numbers. How many players do we have at tight end? It's one. Okay, at least the receivers, you've got bodies there. So for them, I think you look at the opportunity cost, it's small, but it's offset by something we didn't even mention already. He gets to recruit other players. He's got respect around the league, his toughness, his production. It's just going to be a matter of, okay, they get to Thursday maybe next week and go, well, we ran out of our budget. Maybe we should have given Hunter eight or nine million. I just want to explain for people because we have talked about this type of thing in the last few weeks. But when Andrew talks about a tax or two, two, two to three extra million, um, I spoke to a cap specialist, Brad Spielberger from Pro Football Focus, does a great job pegging values great guy. on a recent podcast, and he said he might make Hunter Henry might make a deal that ends up paying him six and a half million dollars per year, not nine million dollars per year, which is what the Patriots are giving him. So that quote unquote tax might be, hey, we know on paper. This ain't a championship situation, right? We've got questions at quarterback. We've got questions all over the roster. You know, do you want to be in Massachusetts where you're paying taxes that are a little bit different than if you'd be in Texas or Florida or Tennessee or somewhere else? Like, that's the kind of tax they might have to pay, Trenny, for a variety of free agents so, to make sure they get guys coming to New England. It's something that Elliot Wolf acknowledged. I asked him about this specific, uh, I guess, a possibility at the Combine, and he said, yeah, we might have to pay a little bit more, but that's usually how free agency works. Guys go where they get the most money. So should they maybe have waited for and let him hit free agency and then he knows what he gets out there, which is only five and a half, six and a half, and then you bring him back at that number? Would that have been the smarter pull? No, I think because Andrew's point is a good one. He's also – he just so happens to be the best tight end available. And so if you can keep him off the market and make sure you keep him in-house without risking losing him to somebody else, you go ahead and you make that move. What does this indicate to you, Andrew, going forward about how they're going to approach free agency? I think they're prioritizing their in-house guys. Everyone knows they have the money, but you at least want to start with the players that you're familiar with, right? Like the big risk when they spend all that money in 2021 is you're bringing in Jalen Mills and, you know, Nelson Aguilar and all these guys you've never met with before. You just threw a bag at them, said your tape looks good, come in, but you don't know how they fit exactly. You know how Hunter Henry fits. If they get a deal done, you know how Kendrick Bourne fits. You don't have to bring back everyone. Trent Brown, probably gone. But I think there's an advantage here. Bring some guys in who can recruit that you want, that you can keep the foundation that we've heard so much about with Gerard Mayo. 